70 miles. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hello and welcome to a new video. This time I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm recording the voiceover for this after the fact uh, because the day I was recording this, I wasn't sure how windy it was gonna be and if all the audio would have to be scrapped anyway. Uh, so this is being recorded after the fact, but I'll be going along with uh, what happened while this was being recorded. So this was at Airquay Park. It was a nice, uh, cool, chilly Sunday. Uh, temperatures were in the mid 30s. Initially, the forecast had called for 40s with sun, so I wasn't dressed uh, as warm as I probably should have. Uh, but in this video, I'm riding my Segway 9Bot Max scooter. And that is a vehicle that has a top speed of, I think, 18.6 miles per hour. Um, you know, so not the fastest thing in the world. And on this ride, most of the people had EUCs or electric unicycles all of which were a bit faster than my uh, scooter. Uh, and there was somebody that had a one wheel, so that would be in the same speed range as the scooter. Maybe it goes a little bit faster, has a little bit more torque, but you know, same general top speed range because those top out around 20, 21. And this was going through Iroquois Park. Uh, it was in December, so the uh, there's an event they have that goes on called the Winter Wood Spectacular where they have lights and stuff throughout the woods that you can pay to drive your car through and see. Uh, so that'll be coming up here in a second. But this was just a nice little joy ride through the park on a day when it had cleared up because it had been raining in the prior days. How many different rides do you have, William? Uh, so I've got three bikes, <laughs> and then this, and I've got a one-wheel pint. Okay. At some point, if there's another ride on a day my brother's available, I'll have him use his truck, and we'll take a couple of bikes. Okay. Because I was a little bit concerned about the Segway getting people upset, but I've taken it to the waterfront a few times, and the cops haven't cared, so they don't care there. I doubt they would anywhere else. Right. Right. I just make sure to do a lot of ghost pedaling. Okay. <laughs> and that's just a reference to one of my e-bikes looking a little bit aggressive. And if people aren't really, you know, used to seeing stuff like that, they might question what it is and if it belongs places. You know, of course, I always ride it at a reasonable speed and, and safely. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's good to make sure that nobody's going to call the cops on you or you're going to get kicked out for riding an e-bike or e-vehicle somewhere. Imagine riding, uh, waiting in a car for an hour and a half to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this event, you have to pay and you get to drive through and you'll be going through at nighttime where all of this uh, stuff that we're going through right now, you know, it's all lit up. It has different colored lights. Uh, you know, I would, just, I would assume it looks pretty cool. Um, they also have a, an event in the fall that's the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular that I think is this, it's this same kind of setup where it's through the woods and you drive through, uh, you know, due to COVID concerns. Uh, before COVID, the jack-o'-lantern spectacular was an event where they would have the jack-o'-lanterns throughout the woods and you would walk through on a trail. So it's a little bit different setup now where you would just, I think the, the, the winter wood spectacular they had done for a few years. And I think that that was always something where uh, you drove through. They didn't have you walk through, as far as I can remember, that, or, or they may have had it through the woods. I just know that um, they had it as a drive-through event because it would be in the winter when it's colder. And, you know, this just, you know, these different areas uh, would be lit up at night, uh, but the fact that you have to sit in your car for an hour or two to get through this makes me think that, you know, I may be okay just riding through during the daytime. And this is something where if you live in the area and you want to go through there before they close uh, this event, um, you can go through as a pedestrian during the daytime, but they do close it to pedestrians starting at 4 p.m., I think, or 4.30 p.m. Basically, as it gets closer to sunset when people start going through this, they shut it to any traffic aside from, you know, people that are working it 
uh, and when cars can start going through after it's dark. And I assume that this tunnel will look pretty cool at nighttime when it's stringed up with uh, different light colors and, and, and such. And this is just going through the back side of the park. Um, you know, there weren't, there weren't cars allowed through here, and those utility vehicles are all people that uh, worked with the event. So there really was no risk of cars coming through this section. <laughs> Now this this part of it, there could be car traffic, but luckily they have relatively low speed limits, and there's not a ton of traffic going through here at all times, because I think that uh, slower speed limits tends to discourage people from using this, you know, as a cut through, although you can. And if you live in the area and you want to go through for a ride, uh, these roads that go along the bottom of the park, they do loop around. Um, you know, if you're on foot or a bicycle or, you know, an electric scooter, one wheel, EUC, e-bike, whatever. Um, you can loop around through these roads that go around the bottom of the park if you want. And, you know, being in December, uh, a lot of the trees don't have many leaves left on them so you can see through to a lot of the surrounding neighborhoods or things that are in the woods uh, when you come through here in the summer and you know in similar lighting conditions and overcast day it would be significantly darker because you'd have more of the tree cover so going in the winter um, or you know when, whenever all the trees have lost their leaves uh, it doesn't get as dark on the road I mean, obviously, this time of year in, in Louisville, it gets dark, you know, 5.30 p.m. every day. But um, these these roads don't get super dark because there's a little bit more uh, light hitting them due to the decreased tree cover. And it is interesting with the, um, the, the EUCs uh with the riders so they they you know go on pretty frequent group rides uh, i think and they have a communication system that plugs into the helmets so they can communicate wirelessly you know without having to use phones or anything i don't know if it's two-way radio or bluetooth or what but uh, they have a setup where they can communicate and then they can have the person that's in charge of being at the front of the ride and the back of the ride in communication that way you can give heads up on uh, things that are coming up on the road and make sure that there's nobody that's broke down or that anything's happened, which is a really cool system and, you know, good for safety and for keeping everyone together and not losing anybody. Uh, and then, you know, on this section here, so I was trying to uh, get in the bike lane, pedestrian lane, if I could. The speed limit's 20. My scooter could do 18.6 miles per hour. Uh, you know, going uphill, you know, some of these inclines on video on, don't look that steep, but, you know, it's enough that they really, you know, the scooter would have trouble getting up to the, you know, the 18.6 miles per hour, you know, doing more like 15 or lower. So I would try to get in the bike lane if I could in those sections. Uh, usually I would try to see if there were cars coming. The downside to riding a scooter is you, you know, can't really put... Uh, rear view mirrors on it like I have on my bikes you have to literally turn your head or I think that you can get like you know wrist mounted mirrors or gloves that have mirrors built in but depending on the terrain you're going through um, taking your hands off the handlebars can be risky on a scooter because uh, you know you have a small wheel and tire and a long stem with handlebars so it's kind of easy to lose control of it if you take a handoff for even a short period of time and you hit any rough terrain. Passing by the uh, Eriquay Park Golf Course now. Or a, a portion of it.
in the uh, EUCs, those can be ridden either standing up or sitting down, obviously. Um, and most of those can go pretty fast and have a pretty long range, especially compared to something like the uh, scooter that I'm riding. There's a one wheel, which I have the one wheel pint, which is a smaller version, which isn't quite as fast. It has a smaller battery, so less of a range. You can see that those uh, EUCs are pretty fast, so they can zip by. Um, it's supposed to be 18.6. Okay. Yeah, so that's just discussing the uh, top speed of the, the scooter. Um, it probably goes a little bit faster on flat ground with a lighter rider. Um, but it did pretty well in this ride. Yeah, it didn't, you know, fall behind too far and this is going to uphill road that goes to the top of the park uh, and currently it's closed to vehicle traffic most of the time so you can still go through on foot or on bikes or you know vehicles like these uh, they have occasionally opened it up to vehicular traffic to drive to the overlook at the top and there are hiking paths that go through the woods that will take you up to the top. And you can find those, you know, on this section on the road. Uh, you can find them all the way from the ground level. Um, there are paths that will take you up to the top. And they have some signage throughout about which paths go where, but um, I've hiked through before. You know, it's not a super long, difficult hike. It's, you know, if somebody who's not like an avid, avid hiker, I would say they fall on kind of the low to intermediate difficulty range. Um, going uphill uh, none of them are too steep you don't have to climb over any big obstacles or any rock climbing or you know go through creeks or things like that it's, you know pretty pretty mild as far as uh, hiking goes and these are roads where they don't look super steep but they're you know slightly banked Getting some tricks in there on the uh, the old electric unicycle. And everybody was uh, slowing down because I think some people had to stop down at the... a little bit before then to change out a jacket or something. So we slowed down. Um, so now we're going, you know, continuing back up to the top of the park. It was a relatively chilly day. It was in the 30s. Initially, the forecast was supposed to be in the 40s with sunshine, so I maybe did not bring warm enough clothing, and it stayed cloudy and in the 30s, so I was pretty cold. But, you know, that's how things go. Um, and obviously, as you go higher up um, towards the top of the park, it's going to be colder. Uh, I think it's a couple hundred feet from, you know, ground level to the top of the park. So it's nothing crazy like being on top of, uh, you know, mountain, but it is, it is a little bit. Huh. This piece is pretty new. Yeah, that's where I couldn't remember if I'd seen that portion before, but I think that that curb was put in more recently. Because I know for a while, the top, this road going to the top of the park was shut uh, to vehicular traffic due to concerns over its structural integrity. 
at least according to the website for the park. Uh, so that may have been something they put in to stop people from going too far to the edge of the road if that uh, was eroding the concrete or blacktop um, on that corner there. That may have helped to keep people off that. And this is the south overlook. Uh, so right now, you know, there's the trees don't have any leaves on them. So you can look out and see over parts of the city. Obviously, years ago, they used to trim that down where you could have a straight shot out. And in the summer, you really can't see anything because there would be leaves and, you know, greenery all over the trees. But in the winter, it's a little bit more bare, so you can see through. The north uh, uh, overlook that everyone's heading towards is open and clear. So with that, the, the, you know, the northern overlook, you can always look out and see the city in the summer or in the winter. You know, unless they just let it get overgrown for a few years and then it <laughs> becomes blocked again. But, you know, it's, it's relatively nice now compared to what it used to be. And riding around the top up here, um, you know, in a second we'll be passing, there are some basketball uh, courts. You have some goals set up. They have a little park area and a little gazebo area that's up here as well. So I don't know how utilized the basketball court here is uh, when the road that goes to the top isn't open. You know, I don't know too many people want to walk all the way up to play, uh, but when the road is open, I would assume people use those because it is kind of a cool location. And then this little side road over here, and you know, up ahead, there's a path to it too. There's a little um, covered patio gazebo type area that's called Jacob's Lodge. And I think um, I looked up some, tried to look up history of the park, and I think I found some old pictures where that was some type of administration building or something back, you know, years and years ago, but they turned it into a, just kind of gazebo uh, picnic area because there's a fire pit in there. It's usually covered in graffiti, and the fire pit's usually not in very great shape, but uh, it is there. And then over to the left, there is um, some picnic area over there as well, and some, some paths that go through the field. It was very muddy, um, so nobody went through. And, you know, not just... Oh no, I don't want to get muddy, but you know, the parks do have signs up to say when they're when it's muddy out to please not use the trails, because um, then they get all rutted up and they have to you know do more maintenance on them. And this is heading towards the overlook portion, the northern overlook. Uh, and there are some roads that snake through the top of the park. Uh, we're about to pass one of those over here. So if you're up at the top of the park on a bike or walking or whatever, um, you know, if you turn left here, you know, it's a road that loops you through the park. It just takes you back um, over by the basketball courts. So it's just a road that goes around the top of the park. And this is an area where there is some parking for when the, the top portion is open. They have some handicap parking up here. But this is the time when you're approaching the overlook and you can start to see, uh, you know, the city because you're at an elevated position. You actually get to see a little bit more sooner in the fall or in the winter because the trees don't have the leaves. In the summer, it's a little bit more, you know, when everything's green and covered, it's a little bit more of a, uh, like, specific cutoff where it's about here where you start to see the cityscape as opposed to you can see it a little bit earlier, you know, in the winter and the fall. This is... This is the overlook where you can see out across the city. You can see all the way to downtown Louisville. You can see out over the south and southwest ends of the city. And you can see out to the, you know the high, you know places in the highlands and other parts. So you get a nice little view across the cityscape. Turn the scooter off here for a second. Because everybody's gonna take a break and. Yeah. Look around and take some pictures. 
Yeah, so that's the uh, the overlook. I've done some other videos here related around urban legend stuff where I was here at nighttime. And that was back in the summer. It's so obviously a different view, but you know, this is the nice view year round. So if you ever want to visit this park, I definitely recommend making your way up to the overlook. And this was making the way back down, so I thought this was kind of a cool view as you're approaching the the southern outlook uh, I went through earlier. You can kind of see out across some of the other parts of the city. That's kind of going more. I think you could probably see um, like Fairdale a little bit, which is uh, the Outer Loop area, the Preston Highway area. If you're familiar with Louisville. Yes, we're just making our way back down, um, back down towards the parking area. Cause, uh, that's why I need to get some air, get a pump to refill some air into their tire. And this is approaching back towards the the parking lot where the the amphitheater is. And, you know, there's some restaurants and such across the street from here that you can go and grab a bite to eat if you visit the park. But that's the amphitheater where they have concerts and different events throughout the year. And this is where, you know, I know some of the, some of the guys rode their EUCs all the way from where they live to the park. But uh, so everybody met up. So this is where uh, I check out. So that's it until next time.